some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello and welcome back to the channel, everybody. And in today's video, we find ourselves uh, perhaps in Las Vegas, perhaps in California. Either way, we've got uh, a man who fancies himself a constitutional law scholar and uh, another guy who actually is an attorney. And they are very much at odds with each other, considering that Mr. Chile de Castro numbskull himself uh, all but called out uh, uh, Patrick Darcy by name as a complete charlatan. Well, we all know who the real charlatan is, and it isn't Patrick Darcy. Now let's go ahead and sit back, relax, and watch these two opposing viewpoints and uh, watch Chile make a complete fool out of himself once again. Hello, world. Today is May 18th, 2024. My name is Chile de Castro. I'm a journalist who's been wrongfully convicted and locked up in the Clark County Detention Dungeon in Nevada. I'm an innocent man who's been put in jail for filming a cop, and that is the extent of any so-called crime. Well, Chili, uh, your so-called crime does exist, no matter how much you call it so-called. And uh, some real lawyers have tried to help you out, but you just spit in their face and say that you're a constitutional law scholar and that you know better. So, dude, you've essentially burned your bridges and never looked back. Not a smart move when there are so many people actually trying to help you. Especially this guy right here, but we'll get into that later on. It's absolutely preposterous that I'm in here, and while I'm in here, you're going to be led by people who are going to mislead you. People are going to try to scare you and say things that simply don't have any constitutional merit or value. Oh, he must be plugging his trifold at this point. I mean, uh, he does realize, probably like the rest of us, that it is full of shit. I mean, even some of the... Uh, First Amendment auditors out there have begun to realize that. They just don't. So I've asked the people to petition the court, and as you should, I have a hearing coming up for the appeal brief that's going to be on July 10th, 2024, in front of Michelle Levitt, Judge Michelle Levitt. The court should be petitioned to release me and to grant my petition to be released. My, it's called an appeal petition. So that's what it is. Everything filed in the court is a petition or a writ. And anybody who tells you you cannot petition the court is a charlatan, and they're misleading you. Well, uh, you're uh, entirely wrong on that, dude. Uh, what you're talking about is uh, redressing your grievances with the government. Uh, that doesn't work with the legal system. That works with the main government itself, not the Justice Department. Uh in this particular occasion, you're, you would have to uh, use those uh, motions and uh, briefs that you talk about. I mean, it's not what you think it is, dude. It's not an end-all, be-all method of getting you out scot-free. Nope, 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 nope. And that fully written uh, appeal that you wrote just isn't going to cut the mustard. I mean, I'm sure the judges is going uh, to get a good laugh out of that. You know, I can sit here and tell you that the world is going to turn to mush tomorrow, and then I can sit and give you the validation as to the reasons why the world is going to turn to mush tomorrow, and it can make perfect sense to you. Just like Don LaPree's multi-million dollar real estate deal, if you buy his videos, you're going to be a millionaire in the real estate market. You remember Don LaPree? And he sat up there, and how many millions of dollars did Don LaPree make telling you, if you get my system, you're going to be a millionaire next year. Just follow my steps, and you're going to be a millionaire, too. And so someone can sit up there and say, I'm credentialed, and I know. Well, gee, Chili, you're talking about yourself right there. You're the one who has no actual education in the law. You're the one who's uh, touting their 20-year uh, law scholar, uh, constitutional law scholarship. Uh, yeah, uh, it seems like, yeah, you might be the snake oil salesman in this case, but, but, but of course, this is just a ploy to try to, uh, make, uh, Patrick Darcy look like an incompetent buffoon, I'm sure. Uh, no, I don't think that's gonna work in this case, because you are probably going to find out that Patrick is an actual attorney, where you 
are just some pissant from nowhere? Well, let me give you just a little bit of a rundown on the history of petitioning in America. July 14th, 1798, President John Adams signs the Sedition Act that says that any sort of obstructing a federal law or for publishing malicious or false writing about the government or the military will get you locked in jail. The Sedition Act does not last. It's going to fall because it's illegal. The First Amendment gives you the right to petition. Well, dude, uh, let me give you a little bit of extra history on that uh, act right there that you're talking about. The uh, Sedition Act was pretty much the... Uh, death nail of the uh, Federalist uh, Party back then. Once they passed that, uh, they kissed their butts goodbye because they were all voted out of office in the next election. And essentially, it was really the first challenge to the First Amendment that had occurred. But this has nothing to do with petitioning the courts to let people go like that. I mean, no, 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 dude. You might want to recheck your uh, scholarly work. And I'm calling for you to petition the court to release me because it's perfectly legal to petition the court. July 29, 1835, a boatload, an entire boatload of abolitionist material goes from New York down to South Carolina in Charleston. What do they do? They burn it. They burn all the abolitionist material. That's on July 29, 1835. Well, then on December 2nd, 1835, Andrew Jackson, in his annual address to Congress, calls for banning, banning the petition of slavery literature. And then this is the big push right now to get slavery abolished in our country was in the early 19th century. So then on February 4th, 1836, the racist senator, John Calhoun, says that it's not the right of the federal government to ban mailing petitions. It's up to state law. That state law can ban the mailing of petitions. <laughs> this is the history of petitioning, and it's just not true. Then on March 9, 1836, after two anti-slavery petitions are submitted to the Senate, Calhoun, John Calhoun from South Carolina, he proposes banning petitions about anti-slavery from the Senate from now and forever. Now the Senate is going to strike that down, but the House has not heard the bill yet. And what are we talking about? We're talking about the House of Representatives in the United States government in 1836. Half of them are attorneys. The fact that many of those senators were attorneys uh, really has jack all to do with what you're talking about. You can petition the government, yes, but can you petition a judge like you're proposing. Can you present a case law, case study, or any literature that says or points out instances of this kind of thing happening where people have gotten together uh, to petition a judge to release somebody and it was legal? Can you do that? Because all you're doing here is showing examples of people petitioning the government, not judges. South Carolina, he proposes the gag rule that you ban all petitions. All petitions, resolutions, memorials, propositions, or papers relating to the subject of slavery on the House floor. May 26, 1836, the, the House passes the gag rule that says you can't put any petitions into the House that have anything to do with interfering with slavery. December 27, 1836. John Calhoun from South Carolina argues that the states reserve the right to ban abolitionist petitions in order to prevent the federal government from becoming a vehicle of anti-slavery activity. Calhoun says that, that D.C. banning slavery is a direct assault on the institution of slaveholding states. Are you listening to what Calhoun is saying? That it's a direct assault on the institution of slaveholding states that you're going to petition and say that you can't have slavery. What about the slaves? Isn't it a direct assault on human freedom, on human dignity? <laughs> so then February 14, 1838, John Quincy Adams, in protest of the gag rule, sent 350 anti-slavery petitions to the House of Representatives. 352 of the direct members of the House of Representatives because John Quincy Adams 
has a right to petition the House of Representatives and tell them that slavery is an abomination and it should be banned. The House passed the gag rule on May 26, 1836. Well, then in 1838, February 14th, on Valentine's Day, John Quincy Adams sends in 350 anti-slavery petitions. August 18th, 1846, the Wilmot Proviso, David Wilmot submits petitions to the House. Slavery will be banned from any U.S. territory, including in the state of California. At this time, though, remember, California is not going to become a state until 1850. August 8th, 1846, the Proviso document, he's saying that you can't have slavery in the U.S. territory called California. What is he doing? He's submitting a petition. February 15th, 1847, anti-slavery forces in the House once again pass a measure in the House via petition to ban slavery in California. What are they doing? They're petitioning the House of Representatives. The House of Representatives has already said they don't want to get a petition, but they got a petition anyway. It is your First Amendment right to petition the government to redress the government. September 20th, 1850, Congress bans slavery in the District of Columbia. How do they do that? Through a petition. A petition is submitted to the House, and then it is signed. Congress bans slavery in Washington, D.C. How do they do that? Through a petition. It's all about petitioning. June 15th, 1917, the Espionage Act that says if you say anything bad about the government, you're going to get a $10,000 fine and 20 years in prison. They're trying to shut down the press. They're trying to shut down petitioning. Throughout the history of our time, there were martyrs who stood on their rights for petitioning. Just so you know, Charles Sinek would go to prison, and in Sinek versus United States, the Supreme Court upheld the government's right to put him in prison for petitioning. They said if, if there is a clear and present danger to law and order, then your civil liberties can be curtailed. Your very first liberty at birth is your right to speak. You're born into the world screaming. June 28, 1940, the Alien Registration Act. All Japanese Americans on the West Coast are being put in internment camps. That's a more direct assault on freedom. But I just wanted to go down a list of the history of petitioning in our country. And you have a right to petition. And you should petition. Dude, uh, uh, yeah, I uh, question your uh, methodology right here. Uh, well, what I'm hearing is the normal functioning of the U.S. government. Because... It, what you're talking about here are senators and congressmen who write up proposals for uh, laws and acts and everything like that, and it goes through the system where Congress has to debate it, and it ends up getting passed or rejected based upon the voting in Congress, then it's passed on to the Senate where it uh, gets voted on or rejected, and if it's uh, rejected, it gets sent back to Congress for uh, further, uh, well, further uh, redrafting. But if it passes, then it goes to the uh, president who can either veto it or pass it. I mean, it just sounds like you don't know how the government works. You don't know what actual petitioning is because you never mentioned one single case of the average citizen petitioning anybody for anything, especially when it came to a, a judge. You never once pointed that out. The judge who's going to hear the appeal on July 10th, and you should petition that biased judge, Ann Zimmerman, who's unprincipled, who hasn't put anybody in jail for obstructing in the past five years that we know of. Uh, yeah, so what's the point? I mean, uh, maybe because you were a special case where you wanted to act all superior and you ended up getting put in your place, you sorry little punk? Oh no, that couldn't be it. And it wasn't the fact that you uh, called uh, the cops in the courthouse pigs. It wasn't the fact that you were uh, back-talking the judge. It wasn't the fact that you were uh, acting like a complete jackass. No. No, 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 no. None of that could have had anything to do with it, could it? And she should be redressed by the people, because what she did is abhorrent, unprincipled, and biased. And there's nothing
nothing wrong with telling her that. I will say it out loud a thousand times, and I'll have it printed, and you can hear me say it. There's nothing wrong with saying the truth to the government. Your voice cannot be silenced, or we do not have freedom. If you can't speak up against injustice, then what do you have? That is the definition of a tyrannical government. Listen, I'm a passionate person. I believe in everything that I'm saying because this is the law. These are the rules. Now, you can get a charlatan to stand up there and say, oh, you know, I'm not against Chile, but I'm not for Chile either. I want everybody to listen to me. Remember what YouTube is about. Views, likes, and comments. That's what it's about. Everybody's in competition trying to get everybody to listen to them. That's the way it is. But they don't have a mission. What's our mission here at Team DLZ? Overturn Kerry versus Ohio. Stand on our First Amendment right to petition, speech, press, and assembly. That's our mission here. And now I'm supposed to abandon the mission because you have some charlatans saying, oh, Chile could get charged with crimes because here's how the court could see it. Yeah, I can tell you right now, we could get hit by a comet next week. There's a comet coming through space. And let me tell you why. It's very probable that we could get hit by this comet tomorrow. And I could sit up here and give you all these different, you know, charts and statistics and graphics and say, oh, yeah, you know, look at this. And, oh, by the way, the world is flat. I can tell you a thousand reasons why the world is flat. You ever watch a flat earth video? They'll sit there and convince you by the time you're done watching, you'll leave it and go, man, you know, man, you know what? There's, there's, there's got to be, it could be flat. And then there's this little science called trigonometry. <laughs> And if you know anything about trigonometry, then you know the world cannot be flat. If you know anything about how satellites work around the world, you can watch MTV, then you know that the world could not be flat, that it would have to be a gigantic conspiracy by every single country in the world throughout the history of time to pretend as though you don't have to triangulate satellites so that you can get reception in Zimbabwe. Um, Chili, your analogies leave something to be desired. While I agree with you the world is not flat and that uh, people will lead you astray on that particular issue, we are dealing with uh, the issue of petitioning the government, not the flat earthers. I mean, so far, you have not provided any evidence whatsoever about the ability to actually petition judges. The only thing that you have provided is the evidence that the U.S. Uh, government does seem to have a function to it. That's all you've shown. That's how it works. Listen, am I allowed to say that I dislike the judge who is biased and unprincipled? Yes, I dislike that judge. I, dis I dislike her for cheating me. Yes, I dislike what she did. I'm allowed to say that. Now, I'm not going to threaten her. I'm not going to do anything that's illegal. I'm going to ask that the people petition the court and say that this is biased, unprincipled, and I shouldn't be in jail. If you want to petition the judge who's going to hear the appeal brief on July 10th, you could petition that judge and say, Mr. DeCastro should be let go. His sentence was ridiculous. And there's nothing wrong with that. If you want to petition the governor and say, release Mr. DeCastro in the name of justice, you, need to, you can petition the governor. If you want to petition the biased, unprincipled Ann Zimmerman, you can petition Ann Zimmerman. And I will not get in trouble. Me calling for millions of people to petition anybody is not illegal. And I cannot get in trouble for it. No matter how much some suit and tie some charlatan stands up there and tries to say, no, no, listen to me. Here's how the court could see it. Yeah, the world is flat and Haley's Comet is going to flatten us all. And I could sit and convince you of it if I just sit here long enough and say it enough times for you to believe it. But it's not true. And if that is the case, then I'll take the charges, I'll be a martyr, and I'll fight for my freedom, and eventually I'll get out of here and I'll win millions of dollars because you have the right to petition. I have the right to call for petitioning. You understand? All right. I don't want you guys to be afraid. And don't listen to charlatans. Remember, while the real genuine article is locked up in a dungeon, you're going to have fakes and frauds who try to take my place. That's a fact. The void has to be filled with something. I'm not there. So that's why these little, what do you call them? underground dwellers who crawl from underneath the rocks. They 
come out and if they say my name, well, then people are going to listen to their channel. People are going to watch their channel. And what do they care about? That they get likes and views and comments. We are about mission over here. And one of our missions is our First Amendment right to petition, press, assembly, and speech. Do not allow your speech to be turned off because of a charlatan. Joey's going to be charged with crimes if you send in a petition. No, I'm not. I am not. That's not true. That's a lie. Send in your petition. Thanks for supporting me and getting me through it. And I only have 50 days, a little more than 50 days, until the appeal brief is going to be heard in front of Michelle Levitt. You should petition the court and say that I should be released and that my appeal brief should go through and the case should be overturned and that you're a concerned citizen. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's not illegal, and I'm not going to get in trouble for it. It's just not going to happen. Well, Chili, you might just have somebody here who is a real uh, legal expert, especially when it comes to the Constitution, that just might disagree with you on that. And he is not too happy about being called a charlatan. No, 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 no. This man actually studied at Georgetown University. Where did you study at, dude? Where did you study at? I mean, besides on YouTube, I mean, that's all you did was YouTube University. In fact, I think you became the dean not too long ago. Well, I got wind of Chili's video. The telephone call got broadcasted where he doesn't say my name, but he calls me out as a charlatan and other things. Ah, don't worry about it, Patrick. It's all part of uh, being a content creator on YouTube. you got to roll with the punches. And I know you can most certainly roll with the punches. Unfortunately, we've got some idiots on YouTube that uh, just don't know how to roll with the punches. Am I right, uh, Shady? Am I right? Behind me is the picture I took of Georgetown University, the main campus, when I first got to D.C. more than 20 years ago. Uh, that's Healy Hall in the background. And the fact that I needed a green screen, I thought the bushes and the shrubbery and the landscaping of Georgetown worked out quite well. Well, I'm sure it's much better than uh, Chile's current uh, background right now with all the gray and bars and everything like that. I mean, it's uh, very depressing to us, I'm sure. But I'm sure he's gotten used to it somewhat by now and probably will be institutionalized here very soon. And, uh, well, when he gets out, he'll be like uh, that dude from uh, the Shawshank Redemption who uh, ended up getting out at a very old age and wanted to go, go back in, but he couldn't. That was not your adversary. And so maybe because you're getting the information in a filtered and incorrect way in jail, you somehow think that I have become an adversary. In fact, I have spent an inordinate amount of time putting out videos that were very helpful to your case. Yeah, that's another issue with certain content creators, uh, Patrick. Uh, you try to help them out as much as you can, and yeah, it comes in, bites in the ass, doesn't it? Well, not just the uh, YouTube content creators, but life as a whole. Now, I'm not a Nevada lawyer, but, you know, why would you ignore all of this? Now, I knew it would be helping you, and my goal here was beyond looking at you. It was the poor who don't have the means to fight back like you do, or me, if I were to be charged with such a crime. Any statute that is vague enough to ensnare innocent people needs to be overturned. And you talk about that in your video, but you had two statutes in your grasp that you could have done this with. You're making a big error by lashing out at people who are not your adversaries because you're gonna need lawyers to get through this mess. Now that you have put Michael Mee in a bad light, it's gonna be harder for you to find another lawyer to help you because without lawyers, you're not getting anywhere. I wasn't getting paid to do all this work. I didn't see anything that I worked on showing up in your trial briefs, in any pretrial motions, at trial, any testimony from you, nothing within your, um, you know, your appellate brief, if you want to call it that. So all of my time was wasted. Well, of course, Patrick. I mean, just look at what Chili is. I mean, he apparently has a massive case of the Dunning-Kruger effect. And a very massive case of a gigantic uh, planet-sized ego at that. One that is, well, very narcissistic. One that is, uh, 
uh, well, never wrong to begin with, and one that will never admit when he's uh, done messed up. And perhaps some ADHD at that, uh, which explains why he can't get anything done. I mean, yeah, that might be part of his issue right there. But Patrick, I don't know if you've ever been, ever been in the room with a narcissist like that. They have to be the smartest person in the room. They have to be the loudest. They have to be the most boisterous. They have to be all that. And, uh, well, let me tell you something. It gets rather annoying rather fast. So maybe you were being diplomatic and you weren't saying my name because you thought that that would be kind of like a, giving me a pass. Okay. Or like I said, maybe because of the stress of being in jail and getting incorrect information, you thought somehow I turned on you. All I was doing was telling your followers to be careful. They're free to do whatever they want. The call that you made really, again, misses the mark. Those were instances where Congress is debating policy, debating a statute, debating changes to statute. That is 100% petitioning activity. And you certainly can let your congressman know about that. Wow, I didn't even watch this video straight through. And he pretty much just laid it out right there with the exact same thing I said to you on the earlier in this video. I mean, dude, you did miss the mark all the way through. How much of an incompetent moron are you? Never mind, we all know the answer to that. I mean, you were such an incompetent moron that you pretty much gave the judge... Well, metaphorically gave the judge the middle finger, and you ended up paying the price for it, and now you blame her rather than yourself. This is much different. This is something before a judge who's supposed to be impartial and not influenced by the followers of the person who's accused of a crime. In your logic, that if millions of petitions were descended on the court, that that would be grounds then to increase your sentence. I can only imagine your reaction to that. You're saying let me out because my followers think that I've been wrongfully convicted. There's nothing fair about that. There is nothing that complies with the law. That is outside the bounds of law. You can't tell a judge that because I can get X number of petitions saying that I'm innocent, that the judge just decides and well, okay, I guess I'm convinced. That's not how the system works. But the point is, is that you attacked me in your video. A charlatan is a very interesting choice of words, not a nice choice of words, I'll tell you that. I think it's an Italian word that refers to the old days of a, a quack physician. But in California law, it doesn't have to hurt me, it would just have a tendency to do it. And if the statements are defamatory on their face, then the damages are already presumed. I don't have to prove them. You could look at the Zsa Zsa Gabor case for a great example. The problem is, Chile, is that you are now attacking people who are not adversaries. I'm not looking to fight you. What I am looking for you to do is to apologize. Say, you know what, Pat? I got bad information. I made a mistake. I didn't expect you to get more than a couple of weeks. But then again, I wasn't expecting you to antagonize the judge while she's sentencing you. Most people would tell you that is a bad idea. And maybe that's what gave you the extra time. I don't know. I'm not going to be able to get into her head. Well, Chili is not the kind of person that's going to listen to anybody's advice because, like I said, he's the smartest man in the room, and you can't tell him any differently. I mean, that's just how he rolls. Yeah, he'll roll until he hits the wall and uh, blame everybody but himself uh, for his little accident. That's just how he is. Maybe you thought that you weren't defaming me by just leaving my name out of it, which I could kind of see. Maybe that's what you thought came from a good place. But just so we're clear, I am a defamation lawyer. I won't need a lawyer to deal with you, but you're going to need several really good ones to deal with me. Don't want to go there, but if it happens, just remember, I warned you. Yeah, good going, Patrick. Uh, yeah, you warned Chili, but uh, is he going to listen to the warning? Uh, perhaps not. I mean, he'll push and push and push until he thefts around and finds out. And, uh, well, uh, he's more likely to do that than anything else. I mean, words of reason really have no effect on that pea-sized brain of his. So, uh, yeah, you might want to, uh, consider, uh, yeah, maybe just, uh, taking some preemptive action and, uh, 
will start writing up the uh, lawsuit itself because you know you're going to have to sue them, right? Yeah, you're going to definitely have to do it in the future. So at any rate, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one. Dude, so there's no way I can get in, bro? Come on, I'll put you on my YouTube. But shut up, Wesley. You gotta put signs up, ma'am, if it's- Are you Glenn Serio? Who's that?